Google's internet balloons have taken off in Kenya. Alphabet Inc. has launched its stratospheric balloons to broadcast Wi-Fi signals over Kenya in their first ever commercial operation, according to Project Loon's chief executive officer Alistair Westgarth. Project Loon has previously tested its floating cell towers to provide emergency signal services in Peru after the 2019 earthquake and in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Writing in Medium, Westgarth says automated machines could launch a balloon to 60,000 feet every 30 minutes. The balloons carry flight controls, antennas, and solar panels, and they can stay in the air for 100 days at a time. Each vehicle has a claimed coverage footprint of over 11,000 square kilometers, about 200 times that of a cell phone tower. The vehicles will allow users to access voice and video calls, WhatsApp, email, web browsing, and other services. The balloons feature machine learning that could help them reposition themselves, beam internet to other vehicles to maintain the network, and service users on the ground. According to Westgarth, the vehicles have connected 35,000 unique users since testing began. According to Project Loon, the stratospheric vehicles will become a new layer of telecom systems between space and ground-based devices. This is anticipated to expand the internet and mobile coverage around the world. From robotics to computing, Alphabet is poking their fingers into every pie. Of course, they aren't the only tech company around trying to own a piece of the future. Elon's mega constellation of commercial satellites just got bigger. SpaceX successfully launched another batch of 60 Starlink satellites with a Falcon 9 rocket. Space.com reports that the mission lifted off at an airbase in Florida at 10.05 a.m. on Friday. According to SpaceX, Falcon 9 is a reusable first-stage booster with nine Merlin 1D engines that put out more thrust than five Boeing 747s at full power. The payload of 60 small satellites rides atop the rocket into orbit. According to SpaceX, Starlinks are telecom satellites that feature ion thrusters for maneuvering into position and articulated solar arrays. Space.com reports the latest launch brought the Starlink constellation up to nearly 300 satellites. The launch marked the fourth time the company used a booster four times. This rocket's earlier missions include a satellite launch and two runs to replenish the International Space Station last year. However, the rocket apparently missed the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You and made a soft landing in the seas near the robotic vessel. Space.com reports that the company is hopeful that the rocket can still be retrieved, citing SpaceX. Alphabet-owned Wing has now become the first company in the U.S. to get approved by the Federal Aviation Administration to use drones for delivering goods. According to a Medium blog post by Wing, the delivery firm has officially become the first drone company to receive an air carrier certification from the Federal Aviation Administration in the U.S. The blog post went on to explain that the certificate would allow them to start a commercial service of delivering goods to American homes. According to Wing's website, each drone weighs about 5 kilograms and will be able to carry packages weighing up to 1.5 kilograms. The drones are able to fly roughly 20 kilometers per round trip. While delivering, the drone hovers around 7 meters above the ground and slowly lowers the package. Delivery goods are attached to a line. The package automatically disconnects from the line when the goods touch the ground, and then the drone flies away, allowing the customer to pick up the package. According to Wing's blog post, the electric drone delivery service will reduce traffic, pollution, and carbon emissions. Reuters reports Wing has already begun its delivery service in the north of Canberra, Australia, and is set to begin a trial in Helsinki, Finland. Google says its supercomputer has achieved quantum supremacy. New research by Google has shown that its Sycamore quantum processor was able to perform a target computation in 200 seconds. In a blog post, Google explained that the same experiment would take the world's fastest supercomputer approximately 10,000 years to produce a similar result. Classical computers process data as individual bits, with each bit labeled 1 or a 0. Quantum computers use qubits. Each qubit is capable of storing 1 and 0 at the same time. This is known as superposition. Qubits are also able to bind to one another and work together in a process called entanglement. This allows the quantum computer to simultaneously calculate various solutions to one single problem at the same time. For the experiment, Google developed a 54-qubit computing chip called Sycamore for its quantum computer, though only 53 were used because one qubit was inoperable. Sycamore is comprised of a two-dimensional grid in which each qubit is attached to four other qubits. According to the study, the quantum computer was able to sample around one million random strings of numbers in approximately three minutes. 
According to Google's blog post, the company plans to make the Sycamore processor available for academic researchers, collaborators, and companies interested in developing algorithms for the technology. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.